In 2016, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk had a revolutionary presentation at the 67th International Astronautical Congress. By then, he simply wanted to share his vision of a future rocket that possesses four key elements for colonizing Mars, including full reusability, refilling in orbit, propellant production on Mars, and right propellant. However, perhaps Elon would never have imagined that his presentation that year would have a profound influence on two talented Blue Origin engineers, Andrew Lapsa and Thomas Feldman. Then they said goodbye to Jeff Bezos, and by 2019 they founded a new space company called Stoke Space in the Pacific Northwest and have been constructing their first rocket, namely Nova. The Nova rocket caught the public eye when it possessed the great features of SpaceX's Starship and achieved breakneck development speed in contrast to BO's new Glenn. It's safe to say that the slow-paced development caused Blue Origin to lose two Wonder Boys. However, thanks to that, the United States Rocketry has a new potential face that shares the same vision and passion as SpaceX. Thus, many expect that Stoke Space will become the next SpaceX in the future, contributing to fortifying what is still a very fragile commercial space economy nowadays. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Aiming to become the fastest company from initial seed funding to demonstrating an orbital class vertical takeoff and landing rocket, Washington-based startup Stoke Space has been actually keeping up its goal. Founded in 2019 by two former Blue Origin employees, Andrew Lapsa and Thomas Feldman. The Stoke Company chose its starting point wisely with a 100% reusable rocket. More interestingly, Stoke recently made a stir in the public with the image of a tank belonging to the first stage of its future rocket, Nova, accompanied by an inspiring tweet. Proof test complete. Next stop, returning to HQ to integrate the remaining fluid systems. The dev tank is full in diameter and has all the complexity of the flight design but is shorter than the flight tank. This happened just a few days after the tweet. Let's go. Stage 1 dev tank on the road to our Moses Lake test site for proof testing. Wow, that was fast. Unlike someone who hasn't launched any orbital rocket in over 20 years, Andrew and Thomas have really impressed space fans with their super-fast rocket development speed. Yeah, it only took them four years to build what they have today from scratch. Very stoked about this. In May 2020, the company won a $225,000 SBIR Phase I grant from the National Science Foundation to work on an integrated propulsion solution for reusable rocket upper stages. Just one year later, in 2021, the total amount of funding the company raised increased manyfold to $74.1 million. In the flush of victories on October 5, 2023, Stoke continued to raise another $100 million. All of the funding has been used to research, develop, and test both the rocket and its infrastructure. 2023 is actually a busy year for the company. In March, they had been granted to lease Launch Complex 14 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida by the Space Launch Delta 45. In April, the Washington-based company introduced a new software tool designed to allow hardware companies to monitor the design, assessment, and integration of complex parts. Dubbed Fusion, the tool is set to target one of the most crucial aspects of the hardware workflow in the development of the company's new fully reusable rocket. After that, their reusable second-stage prototype, the Hopper test vehicle was seen to be shipped to their test site in Washington to gear up for a series of tests in September. This was started off on September 5th with a wet dress rehearsal, followed by a static fire test on the 12th. The test practically simulated the entire hop, including everything from flight avionics, power systems, computers, GNC, RCS, tank pressurization, and, of course, the engine and heat shield. 
It paved the way for the first historic hop of their reusable second-stage rocket. Given that, on the 17th, at Stoke Space's test site in Moses Lake, Washington, the second stage's prototype called Hopper 2 successfully completed a vertical takeoff and vertical landing developmental test flight. The vehicle, using an engine powered by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, rose to an altitude of about 9 meters or roughly 30 feet before landing safely to conclude the 15-second flight. At this point, I hope that you get deja vu. Remember the historic 150-meter hop of Starship Starhopper four years ago? July 25, 2019 became a day that SpaceX fans never forget when the first prototype of Starship's rocket made its first free-flying test hop at SpaceX's Boca Chica, proving ground in South Texas. This historic milestone is the foundation for the inspiring journey of the most powerful rocket on the planet with an ambitious mission. In parallel with Starship's evolution, a small startup in the Pacific Northwest named Stoke Space also set a goal that one day they would be like that. As Lapsa said, our vehicle designs build on the ideas and achievements of prior generations. This explains why, since its release, the Stoke rocket concept has attracted public attention, given that it has some similarities with SpaceX's rockets. Following SpaceX's path, as I said, Stoke Space focuses on a line of fully reusable rockets like the Starship that can fly effectively daily just like we use other modes of transportation. So they have the opportunity to reduce the expenses involving the structure of the launch by another factor of 20. Also, the Nova rocket is expected to have the ability to refuel in space serving for going at any orbit, LEO, GEO, and beyond. But unlike SpaceX rockets and conventional aircraft, they aim to reuse the entire Nova rocket much faster, within 24 hours. So far, the record for the shortest time between missions that SpaceX's Falcon 9 can break is five days from the same SpaceX launch pad, whereas Elon Musk set a goal to fully and rapidly reuse his Starship rocket, where all elements of the rocket are reused like an aircraft. So it turns out that Stoke can surpass its brother SpaceX in the future, right? Oh, not sure. Frankly, Stoke isn't going the way SpaceX and their competitors are going. Stoke is developing Nova to be a medium-class rocket that can deliver 5,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. That puts Nova in the middle of the launch market between Rocket Lab's Light Electron and SpaceX's heavy Falcon 9 in terms of capability. Obviously, making a comparison between a medium-class rocket and the super-huge rockets in this case looks like comparing an apple and a watermelon. Another point, instead of using only methane as fuel like the Starship, the Nova rocket powers the second stage with liquid hydrogen and reusable liquid oxygen. This puts a new challenge for Stoke related to storing hydrogen in space. Hydrogen is very dangerous because it is a flammable, volatile, low-density fuel that leaks easily. To prevent it from boiling off, liquid hydrogen propellant must be kept at near-absolute zero temperatures. This is difficult enough on Earth, but still more so in space where there are incredibly variable thermal conditions in and out of sunlight. Typically, Rockets that use liquid hydrogen fuel in their upper stages must complete all their planned firings within a day or less before this fuel boils off. Stokes' major innovation comes with the fact that standing apart from many upper stages using a single engine, the stage will feature 30 thrusters located on the perimeter of a metal heat shield. It will also feature clamshell-like payload fairings that would open to release satellites. However, unlike single-use rockets, the fairings would remain attached to the rocket instead of being jettisoned so that they could operate multiple times. For its reusable first stage, the company is considering seven conventional full-flow stage combustion rocket engines that burn methane. This configuration is very similar to SpaceX's Raptor engine. Referring to reusability, you should forget or should not forget the re-entry phase of the vehicle. 
while SpaceX's Dragon and Russia's Soyuz capsules use ablative heat shields that are gradually burned away by the heat of re-entry, Starship is equipped with ceramic-based tiles that insulate the vehicles from intense heat. Stokespace will use the re-entry heat as an asset. Super-cold cryogenic propellant will flow through the second stage's heat shield, and as the propellant heats up, it will flow through a turbine that will power a pump that will keep the cryogenic propellant flowing. The second stage will then land back on Earth using the 30 thrusters and landing legs to break its fall. The first stage would be capable of landing back at its launch site or a location downrange like the way SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stages are recovered for reuse. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.